Good morning. Welcome to Monday of a new week, and I can't believe that I'm saying this, but May starts on Friday. Uh, April has just kind of flown by here with the quarantine going on. I don't know if that's good or bad or somewhere in between, but May is almost here, which is crazy to me. And, uh, and today, Mike DeWine is supposed to make an announcement as to how May's going to go. So we'll see how that goes and uh, see how things change there. I assume that at this point you've gotten the email or one call that was sent out yesterday that, um, that we will have the church open um, on Sunday for a service. It's not going to be a conventional, normal worship service. Uh, and you have to RSVP so that we can do the social distancing correctly and, and everything like that. But that is certainly an encouraging thing that's going to be happening for next week. Uh, I mean, that is partially um, determined by what DeWine says tomorrow, I think. But we're, we're getting there. I think that's certainly something to, uh, to be encouraged by. Hopefully you find encouragement in that. Um, this morning, I want to talk about something that we talked about at youth group last night. And we talked about the resurrection and Jesus coming back and uh, focused in John chapter 20, which is where we'll be this morning, uh, we're talking about Doubting Thomas. And Doubting Thomas is somebody that maybe not everybody knows about or has heard of, but for those of you that have heard of him, it's generally in a bad, uh, got a bad reputation. He's called Doubting Thomas because one time he didn't believe that Jesus had done what he said he was going to do. They had a question, and we talked so much about, um, is it okay to question? Is it okay to have questions, to wonder about certain things? Because, I mean, take Thomas, for example, resurrections, you know, people rising from the dead, doesn't happen every day. You know, we, we only have a couple records of that in Scripture, and Jesus is the only permanent one that when he died, he came back, and he didn't die again. You know, we have Lazarus, we have... Um, there, there was a boy in the Old Testament, I think it was Elijah or Elisha. I still get those two mixed up. One of them rose from the, rose, you know, brought a kid back from the dead. Um, Peter and Paul in the book of Acts, they bring people back from the dead. But all of those, they stayed dead, you know, or they didn't stay dead. They, they didn't stay alive. They died again. You know, Jesus is still alive to this day up in heaven, which is so cool. Um, but we talked about the importance of questions, and, and I love some of the questions that students ask me. I love some of the amazing conversations that we get from them. Sometimes I get a silly question, like I, I've been asked, are penguins ice dinosaurs? I, I'm never going to forget that question. That was just a phenomenal question, and it's silly and goofy, and I really didn't know what to say, but I just thought it was it was so funny, and it, it, let, it led into a good conversation about just stuff. Um, we were talking about evolution and creation at that time and got on the path of dinosaurs. And you know, scientists say that birds and dinosaurs are related. So one student's like, well, are, are penguins ice dinosaurs? That's not something they prepare you for in, in Christian school in college. Um, but I've also been asked questions pertaining to the Trinity. You know, we had to take a break from uh, you know scheduled, you know, what I had scheduled to teach for this semester. We had to take a break from that in March before all of this quarantine stuff happened to, to do a series. We just talked about it two weeks on the Trinity. What are the scriptural um, evidences and, and passages that point to the reality of the Trinity, that God is three in one and they're all unique, but they're all the same. You know, the, the, It's deep stuff there. And I love that we got to talk about it. And, you know, there have been so many other questions and discussions that we've had about just real life stuff that these students are going through or wonder about. And I just, I love it. So uh, if you're in John 20, we're going to be looking at verses 24 through 29 here, where Jesus appears to Thomas. And so here we go. Uh, this, Yeah, I'll go ahead and read it. It says, now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. 
Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You know, I, I don't know what I would have done if I were in Thomas's position, you know, not seeing Jesus risen from the dead. I, I don't know if I would have had questions. I don't know if I would have been skeptical. I, I don't know. Um, but I think so many times the church, you know, we look down upon people that have questions because we equate questions or doubting with lack of faith. And maybe to a certain point that's true, but at the same time we have so many people, you know, this world is, is so much different than when I was younger. And that was an incredibly long time ago. You know, some of you are much older than I am. Uh, grew up in a very different world. You know, now we have the internet. Now we have access to all this information. You know, kids have questions because they're bombarded with so many different perspectives on things, and they're just wanting to figure out how the Bible fits into it all. I, I preached, it was one of my two sermons I preached at my last church when I was still in school. Um, I preached, it was kind of my traditional youth ministry sermon um, that I'd used, uh, I'd preached it before out of Psalm 78. And and we talked, or I talked about, um, well, I, I googled, why do young people leave the church? Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but a lot of young people leave the church, especially after high school. So I just Googled, did a quick Google search. Why do people leave the high school, leave the church after high school? And one of the things that popped up was that they weren't, um, you know, they had questions and they weren't welcomed because of it. You know, they, they would ask a question about something and they would just be told, well, just have faith. It's fine. Or you, you don't need to know that. Now, that's not important. Just believe it. And that's hardly ever enough. You know, if I was in school and I had a question for a teacher and I asked them that, they're like, well, you, you don't need to know that now. We'll, we'll get to that next semester. Or you'll, you'll learn that when you're older. I wouldn't have a whole lot of respect for that teacher. And so young people, when they're shunned for having questions or doubts, they don't have a whole lot of respect for the people in the church. And so one of the things that I always try to push for is that Ask questions. I'm never going to get on somebody for asking a question or for having doubts about something. Uh, in my opinion, that's what faith is. You know, you don't call it a walk across the boardwalk kind of faith. You call it a leap of faith because you don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know how it's going to end. You know, faith implies a certain lack of certainty. Therefore, we're going to have questions and wonder about certain things. Now, I, I don't know how prayer works, but I do know that it does. Now, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know when Jesus is going to come back. I don't know a great many things about this book, but I read it so that I can learn. Uh, that's why we ultimately read this, is that we can know more and more and live the kind of life that Jesus wants us to. And so hopefully you welcome questions, you know, whether it's from your kids or from your classmates or from your grandkids or anybody else, because we're all trying to figure out what in the world do we do with this life. That's all. That's everybody's question. You know, why are we here? We're all trying to figure it out. And Christianity makes the most sense to me, and I'm assuming it does to you. <laughs> I hope it does. That, that's why I follow Jesus. It's one of the reasons I should say. Um, but some kids are, some people are still trying to figure that out. So in the future, you know, this might not be something that you can apply right away. But when you do have somebody that comes to you with a question, don't shun them. Don't tell them. Just have faith. Because the first thing they'll do after 
hearing that is give up. They, they won't have respect for the church as much anymore because of how they were treated. So let's be more open-minded in how we treat people that are on their journey, that are trying to figure this all out, trying to figure out what the Bible says, what it means, why it matters. Because our goal is to make disciples, and we can't do that by ostracizing those that wonder and doubt and have questions. So let's welcome them and help them figure it all out. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the truth of your word, that we can stand on it so strongly. But Father, there are certain things that you don't tell us. You know, There are gray areas, I should say. Things that, you know, certain things you tell us, do this, don't do that. You know, this benefits you, this doesn't benefit you. And there's things that you give us principles, but it's how do we apply those principles? Father, give us wisdom. Help us to be loving to those that are trying to figure it out and have questions and just wonder. Because there's so much out there to discover. Father, help us, um, help us to help them on their journey and to help them figure it out, and see ultimately that it is you at the helm, that it is you guiding us all, and that you have ultimately given us purpose and meaning in ways that we cannot even begin to describe. Father, thank you for your love shown by Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. I love you guys.